Walt Thiessen here with Rita Giganti and Linda Armstrong. Today is Friday, May the 29th, 2020. It's 4 p.m. New York time and wherever you are in the world, thanks for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And ladies, at the end of the show last week, uh, you guys kind of threw down the gauntlet, challenged me to see if I could get this app going faster than a couple of months. I said, I'm going to get it done in a couple of months. He's like, oh, go for days, go for days. So I did. And it's not there yet, but I made a lot of progress to the point where anyone who wants to see what the app's going to look like, it's, there's now um, a facsimile of it on the homepage of the website. Nice. And some people can actually interact with it. Depending on what kind of device you have, you, won't, you will or you won't. It, it varies because there are a number of issues still to be ironed out with it. But if you want to take a look, it's on the homepage of LOAToday.net. Wonderful. So credit to you guys for getting me juiced up to go make it happen. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was great. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Linda, you're looking really, really cool in this humid uh, temperature day. How's it going today? Uh, it's going pretty good. I had a really crappy day yesterday. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but now today I have a great day, so it's good. Well, awesome. we kind of did too because uh, we weren't able to live stream yesterday. You know, that was kind of a, a downer, but we can live stream today. It's working, so things are looking up, and that's the good news. And Rita's right. doing good. And I can tell because she's smiling big. And, yes, and you don't have the baseball big. cap today. What is this? Is this like I don't have the baseball cap. I was telling Linda I didn't care. My hair is very long. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm done. A lot of times I don't like my hair on my face. So I put the cap on because it just uh, keeps my hair out of my face. Yeah. Um, but today I was just like, whatever. I don't even, you know. Yeah, yeah I think we're all getting used to longer hair these days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's okay. It's all good. And the really good part is we are on the concluding episode of discussing the book by Raymond Hollowell called Working with the Law, 11 Truth Principles for Successful Living. And uh, Linda, Rita, and I were discussing before the show how the title of this one, it, you could just tell it summarizes the whole book. It's an, and it's exciting. It's an exciting uh, yeah. chapter title because it's the law of success. And hey, success, that's what we all want, right? That's what it's building up to. Exactly. Yeah, this was a good chapter. Did you like it, Linda? Yeah, I did, actually. And and I, I have to say my biggest takeaways are because as he's talking about, I can. Um, I think of the little engine that could, right? I think I can. Right. I think I can. I think I right. can. Because if you have that, I can, it doesn't matter what the obstacles are that come in the way. You have that focus on I can do it. Somehow, right. Somehow, right. Call and support, whatever it is. But it also brings back that other chapter that talked about flowing, being like the water, you know, right. just allowing, just keep flowing towards the goal. Right. So that was a nice reminder. Absolutely. 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 I love the first sentence, which was uh, God intended every individual to succeed. Oh. Nobody's left out of this equation. That's really nice. Um, what's the matter? No yeah. good? Do we lose our something? No, no, it's good. It's all good. <laughs> oh, oh, we didn't, you had this face like something was wrong. No, nothing's wrong. No, it's not, I, I was just saying I love what uh, you read there. I thought that was great. Yeah. So, you know, you really, you read that and you go, yeah, they can't be any victims in this world because God intends for everyone to succeed. It's our, it's, it's about us putting the effort out there and, and aligning with that law god and then it 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 flows it happens you know it just it yeah. just does there's nobody left out of this equation so um everybody's got to get on that um that thinking that line of thinking that oh it you know you are not you are not your for me anyway i i think of it like this i'm not my family i'm not my store i'm not that story I just am me creating my own story here. Right. You know, really. regardless of what happened before. So, so, when, so when Hollywell um, defines or describes uh, the law of success, does he define it? Does he like, give a short, concise definition of what the law of success is? Or is it just more like a description? Um, you know, he, he says that the powers to succeed are inherent in us. So each person is endowed with a complete set of faculties which if properly developed and scientifically applied mm -hmm. will ensure success ever growing success so, you know man is made or women 
we were made to progress. This was, we're not made to be held back, you mm -hmm. know? So that's what creates desire and, you know, wanting to learn things and, and all of that. So when you really love something, when it connects to your energy and you want to study it and you want to, you're going to be successful at it because of the energy you put behind it, mm -hmm. you know? That's true. There, there's two notes. There's one paragraph that I highlighted. I was just looking for it as you were talking about that. It says the law of success is as definite as the laws of any science. The exact use of this law will produce results every time. It is, it is results that count. And as results may be multiplied indefinitely by a persistent application of this law, there is no ending to the success that you can enjoy. Great things are no less possible than small things. And it is great thing. It is the great things that will follow whoever uses the law with faith and understanding. It made me think of Abraham right there off the bat, you know, like there's yeah. nothing that we can't do, but I wanted to share this other thing I, I highlighted on uh, nature, because I think that these two things kind of sum it all up. All of the processes of nature are successful. Nature knows no failures. She never plans anything but success. She aims at results in every form and manner. To succeed in the best and fullest sense of the term, we must, with nature as our model, copy her methods. In her principles and laws, we shall discover the secrets of success. And mm -hmm. then later on, he says, nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's just the way it is. Nothing is impossible. It's only what we put in the way of allowing this flow of everything coming to us that God desires for all of us to be successful. Right source the source field whatever you want to call it um it's there for us and yeah the more we can just let go and that's kind of what this lockdown is kind of pretty good because i think it's allowing people more to get in that place of even if they were forced to kind of let go of some things it brings in new opportunity or new it opens up right it opens up what else is possible because there's always I just did a video on that you know like what what else is possible after coronavirus well that's the question to ask all right, universe, what else is possible? What comes next for me? Don't right. try to answer it. We get in our head and we, you know, we put all those blocks and all those old stories that readers just talking about. We're, that, don't let that define us anymore. Like what's ahead of us? Right. Okay. I always and, like that phrase, nothing is impossible. And the reason yeah. I like it so much is because if you take it literally word for word, no thing is impossible. Well, it's true. Impossible. Uh, no thing is truly impossible because all things are things. It's, it's not no thing. You know, so literally no thing is impossible. Right. And, and that's, that's a cool thing. Sure. <laughs> Except, well, it's, it's not, it's not a thing. It's a non thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> also, I think I, I, uh, for some reason, when I was reading this, especially that first part that I read, um, that we're endowed with a complete set of faculties, right? If properly developed and scientifically applied, you can have success. And I think people don't understand that they don't, that they have a tremendous amount of help around them, like here on this earth, but also in the ethers, like where spirit is. There is a tapestry of energy. I call it, well, spirit describes it as a tapestry of energy that you can connect to at any moment when you are either meditating or contemplating or sitting and just focusing on that energy. It's like, um, how do I explain this? Okay. So Walt, you needed a, an answer, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you just didn't get the answer out of nowhere, right? Somebody in spirit helped you with that answer. I right? mm -hmm. put it sure. right in your mind. Okay. So doctors who are, you know, maybe working on a patient and not sure what to do or scientists who need to, you know, come up with some kind of cure or something, they are getting information and help from that spirit world, from that tapestry of energy that is ever expanding. It never ends. And, you know, I, I know, I know someone who taps into Leonardo da Vinci and she can draw stick figures, but when she taps into him, she could draw portraits. OK, and she does it with her non-dominant hand. Better. So my point is there is help everywhere. You cannot fail if you truly want to succeed because of all the help everywhere that we're, you know, that we're able to be given. So 
tap in, tap into that tapestry because you will get all the answers you need. It's also cool to remember. I love what you're saying because I think it's absolutely right. It's also cool to remember. And this is, I'm not sure remember is almost the right word. Discover is perhaps the better word. It's cool yeah. to discover just how powerful we are. You know, you combine the two together and it, it's just unbeatable. It's an unbeatable combination. But I am learning day by day just how incredible powerful we are and just how much we badmouth ourselves on how powerful we really are. We're incredibly powerful people and, yeah. and we just don't believe it, but we really are. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It's exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. And then you combine that, like you say, with all the help that we get from everyone else in in, in the source energy ether. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know, yeah. <laughs> no wonder we're creators. We have so much power available to us. It's just yeah. amazing. There's something I want to turn over to Rita. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, because really, when we think about creation and all that, we think about magic. And like that little child can create so much stuff in their head. They're living, like they're too, they're living the story, right? They're not just right. telling a story. They're living it and feeling it and sensing it. And it's the story. It, it exists. Right. So it just brings me back to, you know, magic. We have that magic and that ability to call on magical things like the elementals. That's why I want to have maybe Rita talk oh, a little yeah. bit about them. Because if we can call in these um, little spirit beings that are here with the earth, with us, living here with us, although we don't know that they're there, most of us. Um, what can you say about that? Like how did yeah, it so their energies and well, the, the beauty is he mentions nature right off the bat to that, you know, nature has everything it needs. Right. And, you know, the the things that connect to nature, the elementals, the gnomes, the fairies, the divas, the butterflies, the dragonflies, um, you know, the pixies. These are all energies that connect to the earth working simultaneously together as a, you know, um, glue, let's say, you know, they just one kind of folds into the other and they work together to create this magic on this earth. So that's how we go through our seasons. Even though we screwed up the weather here, <laughs> mother nature knows how to adapt to what we've done and she'll straighten it out anyway, if she can. So um, I think that if you can connect to those energies here, the earth energies and the spirit energies simultaneously, it's a win-win because it works as above, so below, right? Mm -hmm. The alpha, the omega, the yin, the yang, it's all working, you know, together to get you to that place. And they're very, very light, fun energies, the earth energies. They really are. Um, there are some movies that depict them you know, um, these energies. And it's, uh, if, if you've seen Maleficent, then no, you know, what's that? I haven't seen it. Oh, watch Maleficent. Good okay. movie. Yeah, because you can see she's in the enchanted forest, the fairy, you know, the fairies, the gnomes, they, they're all there. They're all energetically there, you know. Um, so even though it's, you know, something that, oh, kids can relate to, believe me, you're going to relate to it. Mm -hmm. Um, what else was that other movie that, um, with the blue, they were, they were like blue, the avatar, the, avatar, yeah. right. You know, those little bursts of energy that yeah. that's, you know, it's all earth energy. It's all earth energy. So I love connecting to that energy because I need to be grounded. I'm very much out in the spirit world. So in order for me to really kind of balance my energy i have to work with those energies to stay grounded hmm. okay yeah that's that's another key too isn't it i mean because we're among other things we're trying to build our belief system in ourselves and our confidence in ourselves we're trying to learn how to tap into that inner being that inner power we're trying to maintain balance in our lives because as you just described that balance is important we're trying to do a lot of things all at once and it can take some time to learn. I mean, some of the skills, some of us learn easier than others. And for others, it's right. the other way around, perhaps. You know, so, right. so we're all kind of on similar paths, but we're experiencing it differently. And uh, th I think there is a lot of good in that because, for one thing, those of us who are doing path A, part A of the path well and 
oh, is it doing part B? Well, can kind of exchange information. Well, here's how you do part A. Oh, well, here's how I do part B. Yeah. And, and that way we become. Um, Again, it's like a team, cool right? Creators. Yeah. Cold craze. That's that's what I was saying with the earth energies and the spirit energies. They're just helping us to co-create. I like the earth energies in for because they keep everything very light, mm-hmm. fun, light. So when you get stuck in that energy of I can't do this or I can't find a solution, they come in and they just kind of play with you, mm. you know, and, mm-hmm. and it, it, it kind of loosens you up. It lets you so that they're doing that so that whatever information that needs to come in can come in because you're blocking it by, right. you know, being anxious about it. Right. Right. So, so. They have to lighten up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They tell you to lighten up. Now, I, I had I had um highlighted two things. Go ahead. And, and now I'm reading them back. I'm like, why did I? Because like, I wrote down this note. I don't know. Uh, I, I watched America's Got Talent. Okay. He was the first one of this new series. I think it's on Mondays. And because in the book somewhere, and there might have been a story. I have to try and find it. Maybe Rita, you remember it. Where even when adversity comes in, as long as you still hold that focus, you will achieve success. Mm-hmm. Now, there's this one contestant, I think maybe the last one or near the end, there's this older gentleman, older black gentleman, that's important, um, who has been in jail, falsely accused of some crime for 37 years. My God. So back 37 years ago, um, there was some kind of, I don't know, a rape or something like that. And that's even true. though he had all of these people to collaborate that he was not even near that place. He was a young black youth and they, for whatever they could find of this story to pin to him, they did. And it didn't matter how much evidence was brought forth. They were just going to convict him. And that was it. He right. couldn't fight it. He didn't have right. any power. It was different 37 years ago. Sure. A lot worse than it is now. So, but he was in jail. He got out. They finally let him out because because of DNA. So DNA is what actually freed him, right? They could prove it wasn't him by the DNA right. back then. But the whole time he's in, and he was in not like a an easy prison. He was in one of these maximum securities with the worst of the worst. So in all that time, you know what he did? Wow. He would picture himself singing. Oh, you know what? During that time, I guess the American Got Talent show came on. And so once he was able to see that or in some way knew about that, he started picturing himself on the AGT stage singing. Wow. So he stuck to that. He was he didn't know he was ever going to be free because it was he was never getting out of jail, put it that way. With the, the How sentence. old is he now? He's got to hmm. be uh, he looks 50 something, 50 yeah. something, 60 something. He looks older, but like he's gone through a, quite a bit yeah. of a hard life. Right. 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 So he's definitely. 60 ish, put it that way, a little more, a little less. I don't know. Okay. Um, and, um, oh, yeah. So then he would just hold that focus. And now here he is. He gets out. He gets, he, he, he hears about auditions. He auditions. He's able to get onto the show. So he's singing. I mean, the whole place was in tears because they show you the story ahead of time. And yeah. he has a great voice, right? Wow. And this is what kept me going all those times is I would picture myself. Every day I would be singing on the stage, on the AM uh, America's Got Talent stage. Wow. And by the way, the way you know that he really does have a good voice and they weren't just being nice to him, Simon said he had a good voice. And Simon doesn't say that ever unless he really needs it. Did you see it? I saw the the clip. Yeah, I didn't see the show, but I saw it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty pretty amazing, right? And I was looking at it and just thinking, oh, my God. I mean, it's so easy. It's really so easy. If we just see ourselves as having that success that we want in our life. When we hold true to that, like like in the beginning of the book when it talks about the stream going to the ocean, it just knows it's going to the ocean. That's all it knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great story. Yeah, so it's time now for us to just let go of anything but the story we want to live, right? All those other right. things, there's old stories. Just let them go. Let this little story about – little. it's a big story, actually, about this guy mm. be – maybe the fuel behind giving yourself permission to let go of all that stuff. Right. Some people just can't let go. You know, we can't cause we can choose in every moment. He, he's pretty, I'd love to him. know what he learned in those 37 years that he was there because there's 
a ton of lessons even from that that he was learning. So I'd love to hear his take on on all of that because obviously he kept his energy up. He kept himself. He wasn't, you know, um, I'm sure he was in the beginning, but he was able to forgive and release and let go and, you know, get himself to that point. So that's truly amazing. Yeah. Truly amazing. And inspiring too, because if he can do that, what's our excuse? (laughs) Really? I mean, (laughs) you know what? I can't. If he keeps getting through on the show, I imagine we'll hear more of this story. Oh, yes, that's great. And us wanting to hear more of the story will help, probably help him along as well. Oh, good yeah. grief, yes. I was getting all yeah. kinds of um, of uh, feedback in my life in the last couple of days uh, that really reinforces what I put out there is what come back, comes back. And, and I was also blown away by how quickly it was coming back. It was coming back very, very quickly. And mm. not always on, on stuff that I like because I, I had been spending some time that I really kind of regret, but spending time focusing on stuff I really didn't like very much. And I was getting a whole bunch of it back really fast. Right. And it was right on the same topic, you know? Wow. And thinking, oh, boy, oh, boy. If this doesn't reinforce it, I don't know what does. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you know? Yeah. You have like that happen. And it just, well, I guess you have to be alert to it. You have to be self-aware and willing to recognize, okay, yeah, this is what I asked for. I didn't really intend to ask for this, but I really have to be honest and say, yeah, I kind of did ask for right. that. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I want to read this one little part because I think it does actually tie into what we were just saying. So he says, it is the law's intention that you shall move forward. You can stand still and you can go backwards, thus retarding your normal progress for a while, perhaps as long as a lifetime. But in the end, you will be compelled to move forward, especially in the direction of your soul's growth. Mm-hmm. Okay, Love it. Downstream. Yeah. So, I mean, if it is part of your soul's growth, it's like you're going to get there. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, do we need to go backwards and do we need to stand still? No. But, you know, when we can acknowledge the fact that we're doing that to ourselves, then it's easier to break free and move forward again. Sure. And he says that, you know, a lot of times our failures, probably the majority of our times, our failures come from fear. Oh, there's a big part about that. Yes. Yeah. Fear, he says, fear is largely the cause of failures. Um, the only known remedy for fear is understanding. When one understands that the universe is filled with the presence of God, there is nothing to fear. Read the next part, because that's good, too. Most of us could meet our obligations if it were not for fear of some kind that tells us differently. We hypnotize ourselves into a belief which incapacitates our power. Fear clouds our vision. It benumbs our faculties. It paralyzes our mental forces, which must be free and active if we are to avert calamity. When man's mind is confused by fear, he is in no condition to accept an opportunity. God does not give us the spirit of fear, but of courage and of sound mind. You know, and I, there was the story, I don't know if, if um, this is the one you were talking about, but the two kids that were um, going for a swim in the lake. Yeah. So two good, two guys decided they were going to go for a swim. I think it was about a mile. It's either a mile or two from one end to the other. Well, one, you know, they both went in at the same time. One went completely across. The other one at halfway turned around, saw how far out he was and decided to go back because he felt he couldn't make it. But it was the same distance to go forward as it was to go backwards. But in his head, he was like, yeah, I don't think I could do this. I got to go back the way I came. Mm -hmm. So the friend afterwards said to him when they met up again, said, explain to him like it was the same distance. It was just what you had in your head that created that fear that created you not to come forward with me. He says, all I could see was me getting closer to the end, not further. Mm -hmm. So he was just trying to show him to think of it differently. He says, if you would have thought of it differently and you, if you would have saw yourself coming closer to the land, you would have kept going. Instead of thinking, oh, my God, look how far I am. Yeah. And that's why he turned. So his that is really good with the fear piece of it. 
He right. just got afraid he couldn't make it, you know. And that fear, yeah, took his logic out because obviously he was halfway. Halfway. <laughs> from that, that same distance to the other piece, the first piece of land. Exactly. exactly. I can appreciate that because I, when I was in school, the school I went to had a swim test requirement. You had to swim a mile be, before you could graduate. They wouldn't give you your what? degree. Yeah. Oh, my school God. Went, this was Colgate University in upstate New York. And they had a requirement. They may still have it. I wouldn't be surprised if they still have it. But you had to be able to swim a mile in order to get your degree. And so it's usually the last thing that people end up doing. It was in my case also. And I'm not much of a swimmer. But I made a special special trip back to the campus and arranged you know, to have my swim test and so forth. And I got about a quarter of the way through the swim. And the swim coach comes out. And he's watching my very you know, pitiful swim style and says, I suggest you get on your back. You're never going to make it on a forward crawl. <laughs> he says, you're on your back. Just do this kind of a side stroke. He showed me what to do. And I said, okay, I'll do that. And and he was right. It was a much easier stroke. And so I did that the rest of the way. But I can remember vividly coming into the last part of that mile. Now, you describe in that story about how it was a mile, maybe two across. If it was two miles across and he got one mile out, I know how that feels. Yeah. I was exhausted. Yeah, I was literally exhausted. And I can see how it would have been very easy for me if I was in that same situation to come to the same conclusion that that guy did, that I couldn't yeah. make it, that I had to turn around without realizing I was swimming the same distance. Right. <laughs> I can right. see myself doing that because of how tired I was. Yeah. So when we get ourselves, basically, if we were describing this in vibrational terms, I was in a low vibe state at that point. Right. I, mean, I had exerted a lot of energy. I had almost completed the the test and I thank God it was only one mile. I was really grateful for that. I climbed out after where I dragged myself out of the pool. I mean, it was really, you know, yeah. pushing me to my limit. And when you're in that kind of low vibe state, it, it's hard to maintain that focus on what it is that we really are and where it is, you know, how much confidence we really have in ourselves and how much belief we have in the power of our own minds and so forth. Right. That's why that's my long winded way of saying that's why it's so important to practice in advance. That's why it's so important to just every time we get the opportunity, try new ways to kind of stretch ourselves. You know, there are so many different um, processes that we talk about here on the show. You can find them on you know, social media. You can find them in books. So many different things you can do. You try them all because every time you try one of them, you're stretching yourself. You're setting yourself up for that success that Hollywell is talking about because you're staying focused in one way or another on get on that path toward that place that, as he says, we are inevitably going to get to. Right. And you don't really worry about whether or not you're actually there yet. You just, you're only focused on one thing, just stretching it out a little bit more, giving yourself a little bit more skill than you had yesterday. Just a little right. bit more, a little bit more. So that when the day does come that you're halfway across the lake, you don't hesitate. Like your friend, you go right all the way across the lake. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Vision, envisioning it, you know, is, is important. It really is. Yeah. You know, and then after this whole part about fear, he starts talking about the, I can stuff. You know, if you just mm -hmm. tell yourself, I can, and he points out how, um, people gravitate to people who have an, I can attitude, right? I mean, their energy sure. is of the, this higher energy and their ability to do things that you just kind of you can see that you're kind of drawn to people like that you're not drawn to people who are really downers and always complaining and you know right um so it's, it's a good energy to hold and just remind yourself or even for me i kept getting that little little kid book in my head with the, the train or whatever it was that <laughs> yeah yeah good I think I can. I think I know I can. And I've done that throughout times, when, you know, referred to that book again. When I'm hitting a struggle, I'm like, no, no, no. I think I can. I think I can. I know I can. Yeah. yeah. Thinking is not enough. You've got to know it. Yeah. you got to get to that knowing, right? So you're pushing yourself forward and then that's as soon as it. you know it, it's like, boom, it's done. Right. Although, interestingly, that's how the train did it. The train started off by thinking, 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 thinking. And then after thinking it long enough, he started to believe it. And well, he, he started, started to know it. He started to know it, know it, know it, know it. That's like brain entrainment. I can, I can, I can. Brain entrainment. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> brain entrainment. I like that. Yeah. That's yeah. a good way of describing it. That's, that's I it. like that. But that's the, you know, the hypnotic things with the, you know, the theta brain waves and all that other stuff. Yep. So, yeah, I use a lot of those. So when we are taking the uh, 
11 chapters, because that's really what Hollywell's book is, is the 11 chapters that lead up to this one. This is kind of the summary chapter, right? When we take them all in one great big bundle, so to speak. Mm. I mean, we, there were a few chapters here that had some challenges for us. Last week, in particular, the chapters, I think they were on sacrifice. Those two in particular were pretty challenging. But as a whole, what what what's the whole that you take away from it? Is is it simply what he summarizes in this chapter, the law of success? Uh, well, for me, I really what really resonate with me is just that visual of the stream, like because I can picture what exists in the Hudson River up in the Adirondacks to what exists when it gets down past New York City, right? Right. Like that visual of and whatever's in its way, it's just going to go around it. I mean, water has the power to like carve grooves into stone, right? Water. So, yeah. That. Yeah, I, I think from each chapter, you can pick up even a word or a phrase that will help you, that will resonate with you. For instance, um, for me, it was, I'm just looking at it now. Feel and know that God is your supply and affirm it constantly. Yes. God is my supply. God is my supply. Like affirm that, know that it is the truth, that no matter what, you will get what you need if you ask. What happened? Okay. Your voice, your, your audio just went out somehow. Oh, All right. Oh, you're back. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think each chapter may give you, because um, everybody's going to read it and get something different from it. Mm hmm you know, uh, but the bottom line is, yeah, we're we're looking to succeed in whatever it is that we're putting out there. So, yeah, and I like the part you just mentioned, Rita, because that was my first thing with the first chapter, just by him saying replacing the word law with God, because there's all these laws out there of you right. know, all this stuff in, in the spiritual world that we teach and that we've learned from all these stuff with other people. And then the, just to hear that word is replace it with God. And it's like, oh, of course. Yeah. It makes sense now. Yeah. And, these and if someone who's not comfortable with it, what's that? All these laws are just different ways of looking at different aspects of how you can tap in. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. If you're not comfortable with God, then use whatever word you're comfortable with. I mean, love is universal. You know, some people are not, they don't want to connect to an actual God. So use the word love. It don't matter what the word is. Worst field. Hey, what's going on here? Oh, we're losing read again. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Mercury's in retrograde. What's happening? But the energy's okay. so high here. That's the problem. See, when the energy gets high, the electronics can't always keep up. Yeah, that's the we, truth. We've had the mics go funny for us on this show quite a few times. Numerous times. Really? Yeah. But, you know, there's that the source field. Is that God? Like, you know, it's like, what, what do you want to call it? The universe, this energy that is around us, within us, us. <laughs> Source, whatever you, whatever you feel comfortable with, you know. And, you know, there are, I don't want people to think that there aren't going to be obstacles. There can be obstacles. But if you can see those obstacles from a higher perspective, then you could see them as stepping stones to getting to where you need to be. Which and that's basically means no longer seeing them as obstacles. Seeing, exactly. It's seeing exactly. Them as something and you know what? Thanking them for being there. Yeah. When you're when you're grateful, anytime you're grateful for anything, things begin to just dismantle, disappear. It's like everything becomes right again. You know what I mean? You just have to have that grateful attitude. So. Yeah, and that that was talked about quite a bit, but I can't remember what chapter. <laughs> <laughs> well, when when we talk about success, though. That. I, I I think most people, the first time that they look at a success book, and I guess we could call this a, a success book, is, well, okay, success is this really big thing I have to learn. But that's not the way I look at it anymore. I look at success as something that happens every day in little ways. I think of success in sort of a microcosm rather than in the macrocosm. Because mm. if I if I try to, to measure everything by some major success, all I end up doing is just depressing myself because it isn't here. Right. But when I measure success, you know, one day at a time, one moment at a time, one thing at a time, my God, the success is, you know, just go flying off the map. There's just so many of them. And yeah. it's so much easier to, to believe in them that way. So I, I like thinking about success in terms of the, the little successes. And that kind of seems to fit in with what he talks about there. Yeah, he says success, after all, is only the collection of many good 
results. Right. Yeah. Each step you take and results you get is another success, which builds on it just builds on each other. You know what? There so. was one part of this success chapter, because I'm looking at the end of my notes here, and then maybe it's near the end, where he kind of talks about it almost felt like you just have to keep taking continual action. Like in your spare time, what are you doing? So right. it, the way the way I looked at it is like I look at this corona thing where it's helping people to see how they don't have to be nonstop on their job and missing out on their family or something like that, like to have balance. But I kind of felt like the way he was saying it is that you have to keep you, ha- you have to constantly keep doing towards that goal. Because you mentioned. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I think there's a time for everything. Right. You need rest. There's a time to rest. You want to read. There's a time to read, it, you know, but you need to take the steps. He talks about procrastination. That's and so, you know, he says, yeah, procrastination kills ambition. You know, it just sometimes it, it, procrastination is what you need so that the information can come in. Right. This is where my, my little dilemma is with this, because if you're constantly pushing, like yeah. I don't I know when I create through pushing myself to keep going, I have to do something else. It locks down that flow to where oh. I can just chill and go and do something else, which some people could say you're procrastinating. Are you going to go draw a funny picture when you could be doing your business or whatever it is? Right. But I find that in those times where you decide, OK, I'm not I'm not doing this right now. Yeah, I agree with you, but I, I wouldn't necessarily call it procrastination. I would just say I need a mental break from it so right. that I can get a clearer perspective to come back. Not Procrastination would be, um, you know, I know I got to do that. You know what, I'll do it tomorrow, and tomorrow comes, and I'll do it next week, and next week comes. That's procrastination. But f- if I felt like for a couple of hours getting outside and playing, you know, basketball or whatever it is that I felt like doing to clear my head, to me, that that's another stepping stone. To get you where yeah. you need to be. But, you know, I guess maybe it's an Abraham thing that makes me think this way a little bit in a different direction. I remember there was one story about her needing to book all these flights for all these different events that she was going to. And she just couldn't bring herself to do it. And she would want to do it, but then not just couldn't bring herself to do it. Finally, she gets she wakes up in the middle of the night with the urge to do this. And then she goes and she books everything. She gets upgrades. She gets all these deals. But yes. the right energy. Okay. So, yes. And again, I, I wouldn't call it procrastination. I'd call it, okay, we're waiting for the right. It's like timing. I know. I it, agree with that. You but have they, to know the difference. Yeah. Know like the, the difference. Because right. sometimes procrastination is not procrastination. That's what I was hanging me up on. Yes. This. yes. There's true procrastination where somebody. 100%. Here is blocking them or whatever to actually right. do the thing they want to do. Right. Yeah. What we're really talking about here is called inspired action. Inspired action. Because you're you're really only in a good place to take action when you're inspired, and you're only inspired when you've gotten yourself into a higher vibration space. Right. A lot of uh, teachers teach this concept. You get yourself into that good feeling space, and then you take action. That's what makes it inspired action. Whereas that pushing against thing, that's, that's low vibration. Yeah, but you also don't want to beat yourself up when you don't have the inspiration to do what you think you should be doing. Yeah, that's the little vibration stuff. Fine line comes True. in when you're judging yourself. Yeah. Right. It's like, okay, is this because the timing just isn't right? Or is this because, you know, I've got this other stuff in the way where it's keeping me from doing it? Right. Yeah. And ultimately, no, I, what's I keeping me that. from doing it is me. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I'm right. the one who, I, I'm just not the one who's in the good mind space. So I'm the one blocking. Yeah. Yeah. Or is there some purpose for that because the timing's just not right? You know, you got sure. sometimes I look at it that way and I just go, OK, I just kind of surrender it. And I go, all right, spirit, let me know when. Right. Let me know when, because obviously I'm pushing and it's not it's pushing back. So it's not like I'm not trying. I'm not procrastinating. I'm trying. It's just not working out in that moment. But yeah. well, you asked if he summarizes um, success and he does. It's um, he says success is the way we learn to use two valuable things, our time and our thought. That's how he describes it. Knowledge alone is not success. It's the way we use that knowledge. That's good. I like that. Because ultimately, it's the combination that makes the difference. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. And that, that's, that's really what we're talking about here. I mean, we're talking about 
Oh um, my God. I mean, what Linda gave a great example just now. Um, the that's, example that's of, the of it not being the right time, right? The not, not being the right uh, energy or not the right vibe or whatever. But it's just not right right now. And how do we know that? Because it doesn't feel right. Right. This is, the, again, this is the Abraham concept. You pay attention to, does it feel good? If, does it feel good? Go with it. Does it not feel good? Don't go with it. Right. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't matter what the reason is. The reason doesn't matter. All that matters is how does that vibration feel right now? If that what vibration I, isn't feeling it, then take a break. You know. What I didn't like about it, I'll get back to it again. Yeah. <laughs> That's something running on, on, you know, something triggering, right? So, um, but the time thing to me, the, the way I, and maybe if I, so, someone else wouldn't get that, that, but the way I was reading it, I was just kind of feeling like it was more like, you got to put in the time <laughs> to get to oh. this, step, you know? Yeah. I mean, it did read a little bit like that. It was like, you know, don't waste any time. Don't sit down and just, you know, watch a movie, you know, get up and, and, and use that time to whatever. I mean, you can't, you can't do that 24 seven. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. there's also a difference from back then to now because, um, yes, exactly. Now, 1938, 39 was a little like, different. Time's a whole, a whole different story. Yeah. And how much we actually, and we actually do do more in the same, probably the same time that they had back then. Right. You know, whichever way. You, oh, you know, easily. Yeah. I mean, when you consider what the pace of life is today compared to the pace of life 70 years ago, 80 not years even ago, close. It's, it's no, it's not even a comparison. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, so when you had so much extra time, well, what are you going to do with that time? Do you want to use it towards your success? Okay. <laughs> you want to well, get a good I, feel of know, what that was like? Family. Go watch, go watch the Waltons. That gives you a great idea of what the pace was in the 1930s because everything happens so slowly in that series. It's almost painful. But you could, you know, the the beauty of it of that was that you could enjoy your family. Yeah. Whereas today you got kids doing like so many different things, you never even have a meal together anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? And anybody, I get this all the time from people. They tell me they're bored with all this that's going on. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, how can you be bored? I'm thinking to myself, I got like 16 books I want to read. This is fabulous. You know? So you can make use of your time. You just have to figure it out. I think what we're dealing with that Hollowell did not have to deal with is information overload. Oh, yeah. That overload can talk about creating a block. That can create a block. There's just so much going on. You 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 can't literally process it fast enough. Right. And it overloads you, and you just kind of try and do a halt. Sometimes you slam to a halt. See, and that's another thing that's actually good about this lockdown, even though you know it's not not good. But there's some good. There's always good. <laughs> because, yeah. and I lost my train of thought by trying to qualify it. <laughs> um, It'll come back. Yeah, we're getting. There's too much. That's right. There's just too much going on. And we, and we tend to, this is it. We want to, we don't want to, but we tend to give our power away no. to all those other voices out there and all these different ways, or you need to do it this way. You need to do it this way. You know, I, I created blah, blah, by doing it this way. You need to do it. So it's like, you always got to tune back into yourself and your own energy. And okay, what's true for me? Right. You know, what feels lighter? Truth will always make you feel lighter and, and something heavy is a liar it's, it's just not part of what should be going on within you right well, yeah agreed i often wonder when um i've read many of these old older masters um the ones who wrote before abraham came along i've wondered if they were alive today and they were hearing the abraham message how would they react to it how would they respond to it? i'm sure they'd like it i'm sure that they would respond well but I'm wondering what parts of it they would notice that say, wow, yeah, that just fills in a gap for me that I always had open. I never really had that part figured out. I'm, I'm kind of wondering what Holly loved. You mean if they were reincarnated? Well, re reincarnated or just lived an ex exceptionally long life, whatever. It doesn't really matter how they did it. They just ended up uh, living here in this time period rather than 70, 80 years ago. But with the information that they had that they were writing about 70 to 80 years ago, you know, right. with, with that mindset, looking at, today and experiencing today and then hearing what Abraham has to say, I'm wondering what, how they would respond to that. Yeah. Cause I think he passed in 1980. If I'm not, was it 1980? He passed. It was in the eighties. Yeah. I thought it was the later eighties, but so, yeah, right. I mean, he didn't get what we have now, but we were already full on into, we had the industrial revolution. We had so many oh, yeah. things happen from 39 to the eighties. Oh yeah. So I'm sure he, and when did Abraham begin? 
Uh, in the early 80s, actually. Early 80s. Yeah. Okay. So there's yeah, a little tiny overlap. Be interesting to channel yeah. somebody like, you know, like Hollowell and see what he would have to say at this point. Because I'm reminded of like Dr. Wayne Dyer when he was still alive. There's a recording you can find of him and Abraham kind of like duel of, of the giants kind of a thing. And it was right. fascinating to listen to because you can hear Wayne doing his thing, talking about the stuff that he talks about. And then you hear Abraham doing their thing coming back. And then you hear Wayne kind of readjusting his thought and coming out in a different way. I mean, it was great to hear. That's why I'm, I like that with, I like that idea with any of the great writers, just right. imagining that. Right. Cause it's fun to hear it. It's fun to play it out. Yeah. Cool stuff. It is cool stuff. And I'll, I'll throw another name out there and I'm curious about your take on it. And then also uh, Josie has a question. So I'm going to uh, include her question too. Um, but the question I have for you guys is, first of all, have either of you read any of the Jane Roberts material, the Seth Speaks material? I know Seth it. Speaks? Yeah. yeah. I know it. I haven't read it. No. Okay. So I, I can't really get a, a, a longer discussion out of it. But what I will mention is, first of all, it's not for the faint of heart. It's a similar situation. Seth was like an Abraham. Seth was multi, uh, multiple non-dimensional or uh, non-physical beings. Uh, being channeled through Jane Roberts and that uh, Seth Jane Roberts um, dualism, that, 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 that partnership kind of inspired Esther Hicks when she realized she could do the same thing with Abraham because apparently Jerry and Esther had tried to book something with Jane Roberts only to find she'd already passed. So yeah. they couldn't actually do anything. And so then they found out that Esther could actually do the same thing. And Jerry got all excited and Esther got all excited eventually. So they could do very much the same thing. But the Seth books are not nearly as clear and concise as the Abraham books are. Abraham, uh, the way they say it, I think, is, is best. They say every time that we go to any workshop, um, we always anticipate with love all the wonderful questions we're going to get because the answer is always the same. They boiled it down so succinctly that it literally comes down to the same answer every time. Now, Seth pretty much did the same thing, but the explanations about what non-physical is like and what, what our connection to non-physical is and all the infinite, the infinity of the whole thing and how that all plays out. I mean, they were, they were blowing circuits in my mind as I was reading it. I literally couldn't keep up with it all. So I guess I'm saying all that not to recommend reading that people read Seth. I actually don't recommend it unless you're in a really, really good mind space, but rather there's another example. What would happen if we had a conversation between Abraham and Seth on the same stage at the same time? I mean, talk about mind blowing. That would just be wow. <laughs> so maybe you can maybe you can um, help me with this. Um, Abraham is the name that is given to this entity, correct? It's a group of non-physical entities. A group. Yes. Yeah. They call themselves Abraham. Right. Yeah. Okay. Where are they from? This group. Just from the non-physical, they're okay. So they don't—they're not saying they're from. They're not from any planet or any no. place, anything like. They're just in the spirit world. They're, they're, spirit, they're, they're, they're associated with this universe, but that's about the only connection, really. Okay, and is Seth the same? I don't know enough to answer that question, but my my sense is yes, it's the same. It's yeah, the same I, okay. Kind of you know, then there's also the law of one channelings, and they even make reference. Or when people talk about Law of One, they'll reference Seth as well as mm -hmm. coming before. But Law of One is super deep. <laughs> I can't Sounds like it's Seth, because Seth, I mean, you read that stuff. It, it's kind of like reading A Course in Miracles. That was tough. Exactly. That was deep. And, I mean, that's something you take like a paragraph of the time to absorb. And, and A Course in Miracles was easy compared to Seth. Wow. Yeah. Seth is just absolutely circuit breaking. I mean, wow. it's, it's just wild stuff. Yeah. If you've That's got the headspace for it and you've got the high vibe for it, it, it can be worthwhile, but oh my goodness. I mean, Tom, Tom Wells and I tried to do a show on it one day. We gave up. We just couldn't <laughs> do it. It was too deep. <laughs> uh, well, listen, we're where we're at for a reason. You know, right. I mean, maybe in, in a few years that may change. Who knows? <laughs> Probably we may not. have the circuitry at that point. Now, Josie also had a question, um, sure. and this is something she raised earlier in the week. I think she raised it on Monday, but she wants to know, particularly uh, from you, Rita, do you know the work of Dolores Cannon? Yes. I took her class. You did? Okay. Yeah. What is that like? It, the, it's, um, it's a hypnosis technique. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. 
it really is. It's fascinating. I, she's not no longer with us either, um, but her daughter took over. It's called um, Quantum Hypnosis Quantum Healing, Quantum, right? Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. Mm -hmm. It's you know she she made it into you could you could be there six hours. I actually experienced it, and then I started to actually do it once I learned it. Um, so it's very very interesting what can come out of it. Um, it's very specific to her. Like she's come up with this specific thing. Um, and if you, if you Google her on YouTube, you'll get a tremendous amount of, um, information about her and her speaking. And she even describes the spirit world and, and all of that. So, um, cool stuff, interesting stuff, just another tool to mm -hmm. be used. Um, you know, some people use different hypnosis techniques. Um, this was just another one. Like I said, one person takes her sometimes six hours to get all the information and, and then we go into the hypnosis and then we get so and I've seen things change on a dime with it, you know, um, I, it, it's great. It's great work. I think all these these different things, you know, the tapping, it may not res resonate with everybody. Tapping doesn't necessarily resonate with me either, but mm -hmm. I think it's a great form of energy work, you know, that you can do because you could do it on yourself. You don't need somebody, you know, you can learn to do it on yourself. And sometimes right. that's even better. Um, but yeah, she does, she does some good stuff. And Linda, you knew Dolores Cannon also? Yeah. I, I haven't taken her course. I've actually thought about it from time to time, but it just is, I'm just, it's just not really calling me yet. Or ever, I don't know, <laughs> but I appreciate all that she did. You know, I have some audio books of hers. And, yeah. You know, her daughter's taken over for it. And it, and it seems really, you know, it, really worthwhile mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're drawn to it and you're interested in it to find out more about it. I love the way yeah. you phrase that, though, because you kind of pointed to the possible information overload. There is so much information just on this topic out there today that yeah. you, you literally can't do all of it. I mean, you guys, earlier you were referring to Hollywell talking about doing the law of success, applying the law of success scientifically. And when you said that phrase, it immediately sparked in my mind a book that you ladies probably know um, by Pam Grout called E Squared, which is a collection of scientific experiments that you can do for yourself to verify for yourself that the law of attraction actually does work. And she actually spells out in the book how... You, know, you, you you treat each one like it's a scientific experiment. You have a little log and you say, okay, I'm performing this experiment on this date and at this time, and I'm going to do this, this, and this, and here's what the result is. And you don't worry about whether you got it or not. You just record it. You just keep okay. doing the science every single day, you know? So the scientific approach, it really pays yeah. off. Yeah. I think, um, you know, uh, the, the one thing people should know about Dolores is that she's not a medium. She's not a psychic. Right. So her information comes from the people that she works on mm -hmm. when they're in that state, that higher vibration and they're they're um, they're connected to the spirit world. She's getting information from them about what it's like in spirit. Just yeah. so people understand it's it's very different than, you know, having a medium or a psychic um, give you the information. Not to say that it's it's not um true what she's saying i'm just saying she's getting it differently than you know hey i can identify that's how i get my information I, very little of it exactly. do i get through my own connection i get it from talking to people like absolutely you guys. <laughs> right um, i don't think she realized though that she had her own abilities dolores she would never ever take credit for <laughs> any of it she'd say oh no these are my you know but the work that she was doing and that she put into it was her connection Sure. to the spirit world, you know, and I, I don't know if she fully got that, but, you know, it makes me think of, and Rita, you probably know of Michael Newton. He's another, yes, I've heard of Michael Newton, another psychologist or he does hypnotherapy and he wrote a couple of books and it's all about what the people who are hypnotized are telling them about the afterlife in between yes. and all, right. and they break it down to all different stages and all these different things that you do. And it's pretty fascinating. It's um, unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. You know, the lives between lives book. Mm -hmm. Um, who wrote that? Wrote that. I know that oh. lives between the read that because that'll, that'll knock your socks off, <laughs> you know, 
because they really go into all of that. And uh, yeah, it's it's fascinating. It really is. There's just so much material. There's so so much material, so little time, as the old phrase goes. <laughs> that's what it feels like. I mean, that's why I'm glad that we do a show five days a week. That way, all kinds of stuff comes through here. But yeah. even then, I mean, Hollywell. I never would have heard of Hollywell until that's you brought him Michael, along. That's also Michael Newton. Life. Between oh, it is. Is that him? Is it Newton? Yeah. Okay. So okay. He because he, he spoke. He worked with thousands of people. Thousands. Yeah. The same different place. They'd have things in common as to where they went right after they passed. Right. The different levels of beings that were helping them and the council before them and all of that. It's pretty fascinating. Yeah. I don't, I don't have that one. I have some other books of his. It's a beautiful thing to know and help people to know because then they don't feel like their loved ones are alone or, you know, that they're afraid or that they're this, you know, they, it, it gives you that kind of peace, you know? Mm -hmm. That piece is important too, because that's the beginning of self confidence and it's the beginning of that, that own connection. You talked about how Dolores maybe perhaps didn't develop that internal connection as much as others would have. And I, I can identify with that. Linda can actually reinforce the fact that I, I tend to not give myself credit for certain things. But the fact is, over time, I am learning. I am picking stuff up. I am getting better sure. at, at drawing information on my own. And I'm, I'm recognizing how I've been doing it all along without realizing it. Now, right. have I developed that into a whole thing yet? No, not yet. But I, I don't feel like I have a need to. I'm just continuing to learn, continuing to grow. That's my only need. That's so, it. Beautiful. Yeah. That's the and bottom on, line. Anyway. On this topic, I want to share one more book because maybe somebody else might want to do yeah. it. There's a book called Saved by the Light, and it's by Danian Brinkley. This guy... And in the book, I think there's, he died three times and came back, but he's actually died four times and came back because I've seen him talking recently with uh, something he was doing with David Wilcock. And he's now actually, I think, going through some kind of surgery where if he leaves, he leaves, he doesn't care because he, in, every time he wanted to stay, every time that he passed, he didn't want to come back, but they were telling him of things he needed to do in this life and sending him back. <laughs> so, I mean, Four, four times this guy died and came back and experienced the, the in-between life. Mm. So it, in this book, he talks a bit, he talks about at least three of them, I think. Okay. I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Text that I, to me because I haven't. Okay. That one I don't know, but I'd love to read that. I interviewed a guy who had been through a, a, at least two, um, what they call the near-death experiences. And uh, it's a fascinating story. He, it, it's it's kind of funny because on the one hand, he has a fabulous story to tell. On the other hand, he's kind of a shy interview, so it's hard to draw information out of him. Yeah. But when you when you can get the information out, people like that really have a fascinating story to tell. I'm sorry? Who were you speaking of? I can't remember what his name is. He's a gentleman that I interviewed the very first year that I started the podcast. I'd have to go look up what his name was. I interviewed him twice. He's a really nice guy, really nice guy. Um, but he'd had two um, near-death experiences. Like our friend uh, Chief uh, Chief Howard Peck, or Harold Peck, he was a military guy. He was first in the Coast Guard, and that's where he had his first experience. He I don't remember the exact story, but he got knocked, knocked into the water, knocked unconscious, declared dead, clinically dead went through a whole thing and came back. And then later on, he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer, I think it was. His, his lungs were completely filled with this gigantic tumor. And they gave him like days to live, not even weeks. They gave him a very, very short prognosis. And he's still alive today. The tumor's still there. <laughs> the tumor is still there. He's still you see? Alive. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's the will. Yeah, and there was also your, there was another uh, near death experience where again he passed over and came back in that that time frame as well. But uh, mm. remarkable guy, yeah, and just wow, the guy in the world, really a nice guy. Yeah. Hey, before we go, I want to make sure that I remind people um, who are not yet subscribed to become subscribers. Go to LOAToday.net if you aren't sure how to do it. And I also encourage people who are our regulars who are already subscribed. If you want to check out how the app is going to look that I'm putting together, you can get a first glimpse a glimpse at it by visiting that same homepage, LOAToday.net. So take a, a quick look. And if there are some people who will be able to use it. Others won't be able to. If you can use it, try it out. Tell me um, if it's working well for you. Send me a note. That would be very helpful. 
Um, but I'm continuing to do the work on that to try to get that put together and have an initial launch so we have one thing that works on the app and then we'll just keep adding to the app over time. It's going to be fun. Awesome. So, with that thought in mind, thank you, first of all, Rita, for bringing this thing to our attention. This has been a great oh, my pleasure. pleasure. This my pleasure. Time. Thanks, yeah. Spirit. They, they brought it in. Well, you got to take some credit, too, because you did a good job. You've done good there. You've done good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank having you. me. And this has been fabulous, you know. And thank you to Raymond Hollywell, who wrote the book and uh, who I'm sure is still connected to what goes on here on Earth. So mm -hmm. we're sending out vibes to him saying thank you very much. We appreciate the work that you did. And Linda, right. thank you very much also because you, you, I think you did the most research of all of us. You did, you know, a lot of research on this book. You did a lot of reading, a lot of note taking. <laughs> so thank you very it's much. Oh, good. Uh, we yeah. appreciate that so much. Also want to thank our live streamers and our podcast listeners as well, because without you, we wouldn't have a podcast. <laughs> and by the way, we are growing. We continue to grow. It, it, it's amazing how fast things are picking up just today. I was looking at the numbers today. Today, I don't know what it was. Something happened. But we have had over 1,300 episodes played today. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just pff, explosion. Now, That's will great. that continue? I'm not sure if that continues or not. But, hey, anytime that I get an explosion like that, I figure it will continue and it will grow at a fast. It will keep it getting exponentially higher because it's like yes. this one kind of a peak and it starts moving. Mm. And the energy takes over. So, yay. That's, yay is right. Exciting stuff. So, yeah, good stuff all around. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.